Welcome to David and David on Real Estate. Join us as we explore the ins and outs of the real estate market. Good morning and welcome to podcast number 27. I think we should start doing this in Roman numerals like the Super Bowl. Yeah, keep it uh, keep it a little different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and today's super exciting because we have a very special guest. We have the broker of record, uh, Sabia Ali for Sutton Summit Realty. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Welcome, Sabia. Like I just, I'll repeat what I said off the air now that we're recording. It's about time all these podcasts later, we finally added some class to the podcast <laughs> by having you come on. So we're really excited to, to have you and to, and to hear your thoughts on a, on a few topics today. And uh, you're, you're such a big part of everything that goes on at Sutton Summit. And I think, you know, we want to discuss that and get into all that. But first of all, welcome and, and thanks for being with us today. Thank you. This is lovely. I've always been very proud of both of you putting this together. It's so helpful for all the, all the realtors and people in the industry. And um, this is a great opportunity for me to be on board with you both as well. Yeah, and for our viewers to get to know, you know, uh, you as well. I mean, you've been such a tremendous part of the growth of Summit, and um, you know, every uh, all the realtors really love you and respect you. So I uh, can't wait for our audience to get to know you a little bit better as well. Sounds great. So before we start off, we're going to do our market update, and um, it's the beginning of the year. We're into our second week of January in 2022. And the demand has never been stronger for real estate. We are seeing um, very little inventory. In fact, we've probably seen the lowest level of inventory that we've seen over the last year. And what that's resulting is it's resulting in a lot of showings where we're getting uh, to the point where realtors are having trouble getting into listings to actually show them they're getting booked up. You know, there's a lot of frustrated people out there that, you know, they can't buy the house. They're getting outbid in multiple offers. But now we're also seeing that realtors are having a hard time actually accommodate showings and getting into the properties as well. Right. And our, our industry has mandated that there's no overlapping appointments. You know, people's safety, the seller safety is still our number one concern in this market. So, uh, you know, we are seeing a limited number of showings that listings uh, can accommodate and it's causing, you know, it's causing a lot of issues out there in the industry. So that's the story of our market right now. Uh, we are seeing, you know, a record number of multiple offers being produced. We're seeing prices being driven up and we're still seeing a big shortage of inventory on the market. And with that comes record setting prices. So my message to the market is if you have a property, if you have an investment property, if you have any excess properties, you know, strongly consider putting them on the market and, and, and selling them uh, because now there's never been a better time to list a property to get the best price um, mm -hmm. than, than right now that we're seeing. <clears throat> I also have a little word of advice because um and i actually sent out an email to um, david corman and his partner the other day that we should possibly um start considering um multiple owner uh, investments um because it's really come to that where the prices are extremely high uh people are taking more and more debt to uh try to be in the invest investor market and they've turned around and you know there's there's no possibility out there inventory is so low um that this would be a great time for actually uh considering to you know go in multiple owners for for one single property yeah you know that's an interesting concept and uh, you know i'm trying to give that some thought about how you do it and and, and how to how to format it, it's sort of interesting too because in recent years we've already been doing that multi-owner uh, transaction over and over again all the time, but it's within the family because prices are so high in the, in the GTA that there aren't a lot of first time buyers and sometimes even second time buyers that can afford a property without somebody else guaranteeing it, a parent, uh, a, a, another relative, that type of thing. So uh, years ago, the, the mortgage lenders 
decided they didn't want people to just be guarantors of the mortgage. They insisted they go on title. So there's so many closings that we do these days where there's multi-parties going on title for mortgage purposes to, to raise the money, but it's usually family members. And then things are done with trust agreements and things like that, because they're really acting as guarantors most of the time. Sometimes they actually have equity in it, but that's one thing. But what you're talking about now is, okay, we got to take it to a different level because Prices are so high, so we might need unrelated people who are purely investors and one, you know, it might be 50-50, it might be a bunch of people each putting in 10%, you know, that type of thing, which makes it way more complicated. It certainly makes it interesting, but it's it's a way that that certainly people can uh, or have to consider investing. Uh, with the way the price uh, yeah especially youth right david um you know uh, younger people i was talking to uh one of our staff members yesterday and she's just gotten married and she really wants to go into investments and uh she was she she did not know how how to begin and uh, there's actually i think four or six of them that are renting a house right now um and i said well you know you all have incomes uh you know fair amount of incomes put put talk to uh, you know you or or uh, Jonathan and come up with a plan where you can actually uh, go in and you know invest all together instead of paying um, you know rent in a house yeah and it, it's certainly doable uh, the issue in doing it is it's it's way more complicated mm -hmm. the arrangement that has to be done the documentation that has to be done because they have to have some sort of a joint venture agreement or they got to do it through a incorporate a corporation and then have a shareholder agreement. Um, so it, it's certainly doable, but it gets more complicated, more expensive to, to set those things up, which, which can be a little bit scary for some people. And it also, you know, when they're uh, you're trying to put all their money together, they're going to have to have a budget for covering those type of costs as well. Additional accounting fees, tax advice on those things. So I think we're going to probably need a webinar uh, um, for sure on that. And um, we should probably talk about it more on one of these on one of these podcasts. But it's certainly something to consider. And I like the way you think, Sabia. You're always thinking outside the box and not okay. This is really hard. It, you know, it's hard for us to afford it. So I guess we should just sit it out. No, no, no. Let's come up with another way that you can get in the market. Lateral thinking. That's what it's called. Outside thinking. Outside the box. That's right. <laughs> And we have to in this market. I mean, it's so tough out there to put deals together for everybody, right? I mean, it, you know, I'm going to say it's tough for the sellers as well, right? <clears throat> and it's tough for the sellers because they too themselves are buyers, right? So now when do you sell, right? It's easy to sell and you're getting record higher, high prices, but you also have to jump into the market at, at some point in time as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But talking about multi, um, multi-party buying, I mean, this has been very proud. Uh, um, this has been uh, done in, in commercial real estate for a really long time, right? And it's 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 you know pretty common to have large commercial transactions with a of joint venture partners, right? So I think we're going to start seeing that in the residential world as well as prices continue. And I completely agree, Sabia. Like there is no way we should be setting this out because there's still so much opportunities out there. I just think, exactly. you know, people have to start thinking outside the box. Yeah, yeah. There is money to be made, definitely, you know, and, and um, I think more and more uh, people are now encouraged to come here. Uh, they, I I am the daughter of an expat. Uh, my father was working, um, you know, outside of um, his birth country always. And um, I mean, I know that there's so many of my friends are that, right? They're either working in Dubai and, uh, you know, we're all Middle Asian, and we're all over the world, Singapore, Germany, and, um, and, you know, they need a home, right? They need a place. And, and this seems to be um, the place where with, with people are sending their children more and more to universities and um, the kids are very happily settling down here. Um, you know, my nieces are, are both, they were both went to McGill and they ended up um, just living in Canada because it's um, just a lovely country. And, you know, everything that we do is, is in a way that youth is really, it resonates with the youth. Well, and that raises another issue that the, the government's decided to give us and that's the, the non-resident speculation tax for foreign investors the people you know because a lot of people that wanted to invest here and did invest here and the government in their wisdom 
or, or lack thereof thought that that was driving the real estate market here and decided to that, that a, a partial solution to slow it down was to create this 15% tax on, on properties in, the, in, the, in a new territory that they created, the greater the golden horseshoe mm -hmm. around the, the GTA. And, uh, you know, the reality is it didn't really slow down. It, it's just uh, a lot of investors still invested. They just, it just cost them 15% more because they still wanted to buy a property here, you know, investment property or property for the next generation to come over. And it just became a cost to them doing business. So it didn't really have the effect the government had to slow it down. But the government, oh, this is great. Anyways, we're getting 15% of the action for doing nothing. And all these deals, we get 15%. Like that's pretty good revenue. And it wasn't the current government, it was the prior government. The current government was were critics of it until they took power and they go, oh, this is this is great money. This is great revenues. Now they're even contemplating raising it again. So, you know, I, I, I think it hasn't discouraged people. I think people are still gonna buy. You know, your situation to be in people, you know. They, they still want to be somewhere around the Toronto area when they're investing in property. Well, they, David, uh, when we sent out uh, this uh, December's uh, market report, we prepared something uh, from the brokerage for our, all our realtors to sh share on social media and with their clients. Um, mostly all of, of the areas, uh, Burlington, Milton, Oakville, um, I was looking at even one was showing 30, 35% increases. So it's 15%. So you'll make 15% less right. the first year. Right. <laughs> You're still making 15%, right? Still a great deal, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's 15% it's less, but it's still worth doing. And that's why I think it didn't have the, the effect the government that didn't slow anybody down. People yeah. had that type of money to invest. Yeah, okay, I'll make 15% less, but I'm still going to make good money compared to investing somewhere else in Canada or invest in the US or invest abroad somewhere. And, and David, if you look at markets like Dubai, um, you look at mar markets like uh, Singapore, you even look at somewhere like Karachi, the, the, the dollar per square foot is so high that you, um, you know, we're, we're still, we, we always complain that it, real, real estate is really expensive here, but not really for, for what the cosmopolitan status of our city like i i used to own restaurants in downtown toronto i had timothy's world coffee um and my 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 first location which i which i got was was uh, january 2021 toronto is not the same you know it has become so cosmopolitan it is such a big city vibe um yeah. it's sadly so quieted down with covid right now but but still the 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 wealth the expanse the the, what you see that you know how people are dressed up how they eat what they spend on on dinners um you know i'm i'm looking at more and more of these restaurants doing um these you know set like le pinu is a beautiful restaurant king street and they're doing these set menus they send the wine and the food and all of that to your home and your home. um yeah. and it's not inexpensive AGO yeah. is doing that, you know, pairing menus and, and it's not, not inexpensive in any which when people are, are buying it because, you know, they have nothing else to do. So they, they're doing in-house uh, treats for themselves. So where was the first Timothy's that you did? Where was it? 401 Bay Street, the corner of Bay and Queen. At Bay and right Queen. across from Old City Hall. Yeah. 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 In, in the Simpson Tower. In the yeah. Simpson Tower. Wow. Well, I'll tell you a little story of the Simpson Tower, okay? So it was the Simpson Tower, which became the Bay. Yes. So I was working downtown on, on Bay Street, you know, back in the day. And so I take the subway down to Young and, and, you know, in the winter, I would cut through the store all the time, like to get toward, to get from Young Street to Bay Street. So I'd walk through the department. That was right also the my Timothy's. Were... The, little, the little chaos store was also my. Yeah. So I probably stopped for coffee there a bunch of times and went through there. But I used to cut right through the menswear store and I'm going through there one time and the ceiling had to be about 30 feet high or something in, in the menswear department. And on the, there was a big wall, full wall, and they had a mural up there of a guy in a in a dress shirt with a tie you know it's the menswear department and i look up and i do a double take it was bruce witchell no it wasn't come on honest to god so bruce before he became one of the top real estate agents and, and he's been at your place for how many years already 20 odd years oh he's been, he's been here been for 37 i think yes he, yeah. he grew up you know when i first knew him we used to play baseball together and everything uh, bruce was did some modeling 
And they, they took one of his pictures, and I think this was even after he finished, but like the picture was probably taken maybe 10 years before that. And they blew it up. It was the full size of the whole <laughs> wall. And every morning I would be passing that and saying, you know, morning, Bruce, morning, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you didn't know Bruce at that time, did you? Yeah, no, I did. Before, oh, you didn't know yeah, when I was downtown practicing, uh, Bruce um, and I played baseball together. That's where I first got oh, to, wow. to know him. He wasn't in real estate yet. Wow. And he had he had done in his youth, he had done a lot of uh, modeling. So I think this, if I remember correctly, I have to check. I think he'd already finished, like he wasn't modeling anymore at that time. But they, but it was a great picture of him. And they just decided to, you know, they had that in stock and they put it up and uh, unbelievable. Yeah. And it was up there for, for, a, for many, many years until they finally uh, renovated the place. That's such a great story. What a small yeah. world. It is. So Sabia, how long were you in that in that industry? So from 2001 to 2011, late 2011, when I started yeah. real estate, yeah. Yeah. Things were changing in Toronto, rents were getting really, really high. Um, I was offered a location. The last one was on King Street, 650 King Street. It's a condominium building. Um, and luckily so I kind of got out of it before because by the time the uh, condo corporation came into being, um, it was already, I had to uh, do a million dollars of sales to break even, which is a lot of coffee to sell. Um, by, by the time the condo corporation came into being, they said uh, no business will be open after 6 p.m. And you know, King West, I would have yeah. gone and, and died there. But um, yeah, so I mean, real estate has been kind. Uh, my kids were growing up at that time. Um, I got acquainted with uh, with Sutton Summit at, at the dot of the time. I was actually signing up with uh, another company and I went to a dinner party. I was going to go uh, sign up with another company the ne very next day. And there was a lady there and she was at Sutton Summit and she, I talked to her and I thought, you know what, I've been commuting to Toronto for so, so long and I live in Mississauga. Um, let's tr try just going and meeting them. And I went and I met, uh, there used to be a lady called Tina Robbins and Wince. Uh, and I just, I just really, you know, resonated with them. They were not hard sellers. They were um, both from real estate industry. Um, they, they actually were talking about the challenges of the business. Um, and it just, you know, I was a single mom and it just resonated with me that they were very kind people who were not just hard selling their, their company. And I think since then, uh, we've stayed true to it. And I think David and I uh, work on, a, on that on a daily basis where um, we feel for the realtors. You know, we've been alongside them. Um, we've been there for now close to 11 years, correct, right, David? Both of us. And, um, you know, it's been home and uh, these are our friends and our colleagues or we've mentored these people. So it's, it's been a relationship of uh, longevity, a relationship of a really authentic relationship. You know, um, we, David and I were talking about this podcast yesterday a little bit and putting some notes together. And the numbers we've been able to grow in the last couple of years that uh, him and I have been working together, I think is, is for this reason is that we've, we've David, what, almost doubled the company in the last doubled two the years? Company, literally in the last yeah, a company time. that's been around for, for, you know, close to 40 years, we've been able to double it um, in, in a matter of two years and two years of hardship. I'm not able to meet everybody through COVID. You know, a lot right. of my interviews are done yeah, on Two of the Zoom. toughest years. It's been the toughest year for most industries. People are scared, people are worried, people have been walking away from a lot of things because they can't afford it. Um, being a realtor is not inexpensive in any which way. You know, there's fees and memberships and dues and all of that. It's a, it's a challenging build business. Um, as David has mentioned, is in, in, inventory is lower and lower. Each one of us know that we work more often with buyers than sellers to begin with in any market, right? right. And it's the hardest market really to work with buyers. You know, people are not comfortable letting people into their homes. Closing has, have, closings have been, um, you know, close to impossible. Tenants have not left. You know, there's so many different things in play, um, you know, where, where obviously for the, for the welfare of all people, government has put in regulations about um, tenants not having to vacate because of COVID, uh, landlords having to pay the tenants uh, you know, certain amounts to um, recover for the loss of 
um, shelter and so on and so forth. So it's it's just been a tough uh, year uh, in the last two years. And um, through our vaccinations and our booster shots and all of that, um, you know, we've been able to march forward and uh, keep the company growing. But I think the, the core of it is, is that I am a realtor and David is a realtor and we come from, a you know, we feel for the realtors. And I think if, yep. if anything is done authentically, um, you know, with the heart in the right place, um, success is, is not hard, um, you know. And so I tell my realtors this all the time, just keep plugging at it. Um, one of our realtors, he, um, he came from another brokerage um, and has finally put a very hefty deal together for one of his clients. And he sent me a text saying exactly this, that, you know, I could have never done this without uh, you and David. And the next day he came in to submit his paperwork and, and he was struggling with, you know, simple computer skills. And I was like, okay, this is, I'm going to take off my broker of record hat now because the negotiation is done and I'll be your tech, tech specialist now. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's all, literally like all, all aspects. Um, day before yesterday, myself and one of my, my top realtors, we actually went with one of our realtors who was having such a tough time. He had been losing properties after properties, putting offers in, in them. And finally, uh, day before, uh, day before, right before yesterday, we were able to put a deal for him together. So he has now a home. He sold his house two years ago and then he couldn't buy one just because how tough the market went. And uh, 9 p.m. we went for a showing and by 10.30, uh, David Malik had a home. Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. <laughs> so we yes. literally, uh, you know, Salman and myself, we handheld him the prop from the, with the deal. We took him out of the thing. And, you know, this is also it because emotions play such a big role. And if you are a part of a company which will actually help you through, um, David, you have a story like that too. Remember when you were selling your, your web, web, uh, web drive uh, condo? How long ago was that? That must have been seven years ago. It was a long time ago, but I mean, it's, uh, it goes to illustrate that, you know, it's your home. It's where memories are, are, are created, you know, and, you, and you're so attached to it in the first person that having a realtor or a professional that's completely detached in the process that can really guide you through and make such a big difference. And, um, you know, I had it listed for, I think about eight months and, 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 you know, it was tough, you know, it was my condo, it was, it was my apartment. Right. And, uh, it's, uh, it's only when Sabia actually stepped in and, and took over the listing, it got sold in, uh, in, in a matter of weeks. Yeah, that was seven years ago, uh, David. And I mean, I, I can't, I can't say uh, more about this company where we, you know, and we did it again for Malik uh, day before yesterday. There was no commission charge for from him. There was nothing, you know, it was, we literally went in and, <laughs> and put him in the house and made sure that he finally has a house after, I don't know, 15 offers or so, I, I you know? Think it's been a year and a half of, you know, him constantly second guessing and losing properties and, and, and not being able to navigate. And again, you're doing it for yourself. So it's, it's, it's really difficult as a realtor yeah. um, in, in the first position, right? It's a lot easier if you have a third party um, guiding you through it. Yeah. There's way too many emotions and, you know, it just, it, it just gets really, really hard, um, you know, and it's, it's great to be around people that will help you maneuver through these processes. I'll just interject. It's not just any people. Okay. And I want to give the two of you a lot of credit here uh, because I, I think one of the advantages that everybody that's part of your brokerage, all the, the agents there have is that when they do come for guidance, they're coming to the two of you to help them out in this. And both of you come from, I think you look at yourselves first as entrepreneurs uh, because you, you have entrepreneurial backgrounds, okay? Sabia, you were in, in, in another business. David, you, you, know, you were acting for years as, as a realtor yourself. You're always looking for the next business. Even businesses outside this business, you're looking for the next thing. So you both have this entrepreneurial spirit. And I think you bring that to every transaction too. Because when, when issues come up and there's, you know, some people look at it, there's a problem on this or there's an issue on this. There's a negative thing that we got to overcome. You look at it as a challenge not as a problem, it's a challenge. Let's find a solution. Here's the challenge, let's find a solution to it. And I think that's just, 
inherent the way the two of you both think. I think that's one of the reasons why the two of you get along so well and complement each other. But I think the beneficiary of all that is the agents that are part of your brokerage. Because when they do come for help, it's not, oh, here's the here's the language, here's the two words that you're looking for, here's what you should do. It's you're, you're looking at their whole transaction and trying to figure out how are we going to make this work? What's what's the best way to do it? And it's not, oh, you know, don't do that or don't do this. It's not negativity. It's usually in a positive framework. Let's figure out how we're going to make this, this work. And uh, so, you know, you should take a lot of pride in that because that's what I see when I deal with you and when I talk to other agents within your brokerage. That's the type of feedback that I get from it, you know, and, and that's fabulous. And people don't get that kind of support everywhere. I can tell you that. I think it's also our, our excitement and our love for the industry. Um, we, we really believe in this. I think there is nothing which excites us more than, um, than properties. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like that, right? Like the whole transaction, the whole, uh, like every aspect of it is, is, is super exciting for us. We just love what we do. And, um, and we've kind of immersed ourselves, not just as realtors now, but as, as, as people that to people that are running a brokerage, um, so we are coming across so many deals and so many challenges, and it's it's a it's a daily uh, you know uh, sport. I think you know an exciting exciting sport which we love so much. Yeah, and and you look forward to the challenges. It's amazing, you know. David and I talk about this on these podcasts. That, you know, with with our experience in the industry, you think you've seen everything, and every week there's something new that happens there's just some new Disney twist wants. some something different and we go i don't know how, how are we going to do this one and you know and you, and you scratch your head a little bit and you then you you roll up your sleeves and you try and figure it out mm. and it's always a moving target so it's great that you embrace that and look forward to that and get excited by that because uh, that helps you and then you bring all those you know the the training techniques that you've used you know, back in your previous life as an entrepreneur and a business owner, that, you know, there's so many things you can bring from, you know, from a Timothy's experience you have that you can bring it into this world and see what works, what doesn't work, what principles work and, and use that. I assume you use some of that as part of your training too. Absolutely, David. Um, so I was actually at a flagship store and I think about uh, three years into it, I became a training store for the company, for the franchise. Um, so, I mean, I was not only helping people train how, how to run the restaurant, but also how to run their business, how to manage their money, how to, you know, all of those aspects of, you know, uh, uh, how to put products out, like all of that. And I mean, that presentation, that financial um, understanding of how you're going to uh, keep the, the ship sailing you know, um, especially as a new business owner, this is all parts of parts of real estate, right? It's a you you do um, tw twenty. Tw uh, you're you're looking at, at uh, any property is about a million dollar now. Average pro price of a property is a million dollar now. So you're looking at good commissions, and everybody thinks in the world that realtors make a lot of money, but they don't. It's really really challenging. You know, um, a realtor is able to do three four deals sometimes in the whole year, and that's it and expenses are high. So, you know, how to stay afloat, how to keep managing, um, you know, how to keep, keep having a, a stream of uh, work coming towards you, how, how to manage that. All of that is so, so important. Um, and in the, in the last two years, we've, we've really worked on, um, I mean, we've not just been able to recruit just like that. As a company, we've grown so much, right? We've been every possible technology, the top of the line, um, you know, working on our partnerships, how much, you know, Cormans has joined hand with, with hands with us, all these podcasts, webinars, these are all value added um, you know, things that we are doing to the broker for the brokerage, we added broker bay, um, you know, we've really like grown our trades department, uh, we had used to have always for the history of the company, we had one person, right, presently, we have three people, plus um, my, uh, my right hand, she's a trades person as well, and she kicks in, so we literally have four people now um, uh, doing doing trades, to, to be able to, you know, um, get give out the best service for our realtors is very, very important for us because I come from the service industry. 
I come from a ma marketing background, but I also come from the service industry. And I know this, that my realtors are my clients, right? And I mean, in no which way does a client call you up and you don't answer the phone, right? Like realtors always say that you always have your phone attached to your hip and you always answer. I remember we did a webinar with Bruce and he said this is that, uh, you know, I always, I always answer the phone and I said, I, even if I have to say, if I'm on another call, I'll call you right back, but I always answer the phone, you know, and that really resonates with, with us. We don't just let realtors just call, call up and, you know, not ignore their calls. You know, we are there for them. Um, and that creates this really, um, you know, feeling of, you know, we, we've been taken care of, right? Mistakes are not happened. Uh, David multiple times has said, said this, that we like to uh, be there right at the beginning so that a situation doesn't occur, which has to be fixed later. You know, right off the bat, um, I think it was Monday, uh, one of our realtors uh, from the Burlington office was putting a deal together. Another broker of record called up. Obviously, you know, buyer agents are on the edge. They're standing on the cliff to jump these days because of, uh, you know, the, the kind of challenge that they are facing. The listing was ours. And the broker of record were called up. Right off the bat, I knew there was going to be a problem. I answered the phone. I was still at the office. I think it was 8 p.m. And I answered the phone. I, I, call, I talked to this guy and he was like, well, he was really surprised. Oh, you're still at the office? Because, you know, I, I picked up right away. And I said, yes, I am. And then I called up my realtor and I said, you know, make sure that everything is done right. And just right away, the, the situation was dwindled, which the other realtor was threatening to go to Rico and this and that. Which, I mean, there was no wrongdoing on our part, but it, it's just buyer agents are so edgy and so ready to pounce on things that this has been, you know, it's been a firefighting situation for me as well. It's been a real challenge. Everybody's coming up with a complaint to Rico because they're so frustrated and they want to let their clients know that it's not on their part that their clients are losing house after house. They want to blame, it's a, it's a blame game that people are playing as well in the industry. Look, it's hard. If you're, if you're a selling agent in a multi-offer situation, you got 18 offers presented in a short period of time. You got an obligation to look at them all and get back to all those agents in a timely fashion too. You know, if you spend, you know, five minutes on each one of them, five times 18 is a lot of time. Like, you know, so everybody's not going to hear back as fast as they would like to and then think they're being ignored and think the agent's not doing the right job, you know, until they're on the other side of the fence and they realize it's just impossible. You can't respond to all 18 at the same time. Someone's going to be first and someone's going to be 18, right? Yeah, yeah. So part of your role, I, I assume, is, is managing your own, like as you refer to your clients, your agents, your clients, you got to manage their expectations and keep them on the, you know, on the tracks and, and be their I have 260 of sometimes, them. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have, we have now knock on what 260 of them and I, and uh, hopefully, you know, uh, more coming our way. Absolutely. But that, that, that also comes with, you know, really improving our team, making our team really, really strong. Um, so I'm not the only one, right? There's, there's other people that are responsive as well for our realtors, um, yeah. you know, and, and keeping our team very, very well trained and very sharp, right? That they're able to bat off a lot of things. Our, our, our front desk concierge, our trades department, um, David, Manjot, we're all there, you know, to, to facilitate our realtors in, in being able to uh, deal with things in a timely manner. So when you're recruiting, like it's fairly competitive out there. There's a lot of, a lot of brokerages. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there's tons of competition out there. So how do you go about it? Uh, you know, like what are, what's your approach when you're, when you're meeting with someone or you're trying to recruit somebody like, you know, what is it that you focus on? What do you usually find that they're looking for if they're going to make a change or if they're brand new? Right. So, so David, um, a few things that I really developed, and I think it is from my, my marketing and marketing background, because I was, used to work for YNR. I, I work for an advertising agency. Um, and um, that has actually um, showed me how to really present to people um, exactly what so you know you come up with with a new realtor or an experienced realtor what would they really want right and we try every day David and myself to uh, be able to provide what they're really looking for 
right? There are so many things that we've added. We've added a really strong uh, graphic department to the brokerage. You know, money is short. Marketing is very, very hard for realtors, right? Um, to be able to, to, to provide them with presentations, to provide them with all sorts of uh, in-house graphics, we don't charge for any of that. Right, and we keep bringing more and more tools to facilitate their businesses. Right, um, we have, um, you know, up to now, and hopefully, um, the the amount of numbers we are growing in our in our staff and the the, the kind of staff we are recruiting, um, they're very very capable. Right, you need a lot of one on one on in this business. You know, there are times when you're be doing a deal or doing your paperwork, and you need all of those resources to be provided to you for the brokerage. Um, uh, I've been able to pinpoint because of being in the industry and actively, uh, you know, trading um, that what exactly a realtor requires going forward from from the start to the end of the process. And we try to provide them and we co constantly are tweaking our, our systems. So when a person comes in for an interview and we're talking to them, we're resonating because I already know what the worry is going to be. What's the worry in the back of the mind of a new realtor? What's the worry of, in the back of the mind of, a, of an established realtor, right? And I always say this is the, the better you keep doing in, in your business, the lonelier you get. Life is tough for a realtor. You know, you'll miss your 40th wedding anniversary. You'll miss your son's 20th birthday. You're going to miss your son's second birthday. Uh, you're eventually your spouse is going to not be happy with you. You know, they say divorce rate is one of the highest in real realtors for this reason. Like, you know, you, when you have to go, the stakes are so high. You haven't done a deal in three, three months. The stakes are so high that you must leave right then and there and, and, and pounce on something. Otherwise, you're going to lose it, especially in a market like this, right? That property that came on the market one hour ago, you know, will not be there uh, uh, in the next five hours. So then, then for you to have that team that is able to circle you around, 9 p.m., your broker of record, was able to go to a showing with you and help you put that deal together, right? So I need to be still in the same form, uh, you know, um, David, agile and fit and youthful, right? <laughs> and to be able to, you know, just, you, you need a team around you that is able to, to help you through the process. And if I, I can kind of help people understand that in, in my first meeting, because that's all you have. Right. If I if I can, it's like a listing presentation, right? Or it's a buyer, buyer presentation. If you don't have a proper presentation, if you're pro not um, conveying the message properly, you might be a great brokerage, but if you're not conveying uh, the the message properly, like a realtor, you might be an amazing realtor. Your pr presentation is shabby. You walk in not not in your in your best form. That, that's what the other person's going to think is I, it's going to be like half half hearted, uh, you know, all along. And, and we don't do anything half hearted. I'm way too passionate to do anything half hearted. So, um, you know, I, th I think that that really resonates with and the energy that you give to people. You, they need to feel realtors need to feel that they're taken care of. Right. That I will be there and my commitment is there for them. And as long as it's, it's coming from the right place, uh, you know. You're able to recruit. I, I have. I, I think I should say, uh, David. I, th I think we should have a, a scoreboard as to what my scores are. In, in. <laughs> I do pretty well. I'm pretty competitive. <laughs> well, you know what, Liz? To be, I'm listening to you, and I, I find it all interesting. And um, and but one one thing that stands out to me a little bit in all that, like David and I recently did a podcast, and we talked about fees. And commissions, and how you how you shouldn't undercut your your commissions to buy business, and, and and we do the same thing in our end. We're not trying to be a discount law office. You know, we want to get paid fairly, and you know, market you know for our fees. So, and I'm never in our firm. We're not trying to buy business based on our our fees and everything. So I'm listening to you for the last few minutes talk about how you recruit and all the methods, and not once did did you mention the fact. Well, you know, we have a, a better split or a not once was there a dollar sign in anything that you said. Yeah. And sometimes agents are too focused on that. Oh, I'm, I'm at this brokerage, but if I go to this brokerage, my split will be different and I can make more money. It's not about that. 
right? It's, it's that's on the not continent. really that shouldn't be the paramount thought process. And unfortunately, too many agents you know, sometimes think in those terms. And I think you're one, both of you are, get them off that. Don't think about that. You know, if you do more business, regardless of what the split is, you're going to make more money. But here's how you're going to be more successful. You got to you got to have all these other techniques. You got to do all the rest of this. Don't focus on the dollars. Right. The, the, the realtor I was telling you about who did his first deal after being in the business for three years, he joined us recently, um, actually through our front desk uh, um, uh, concierge lady, uh, Manny. She brought him in um, two years in a, in a discount brokerage. And he is, I think, my my top ambassador calls me boss. I'm called the boss, by the way, by most people. Uh, I have a pair of socks to prove that. It actually says boss on them. <laughs> but, um, you know, um, they, uh, no, I, I mean, going discount, you know, I, I'd rather have two pairs of shoes, uh, which is a lie, but I would rather have two pairs of shoes, but really good, comfortable shoes. I would save towards buying uh, the right pair. Um, you don't want a realtor who's discount a discount realtor because of the mismanagement that can be caused. Um, you know, in this industry, we are dealing with people's um, whole life savings and then some. You know, who's walking around with bags full of cash with the with the amount of um, um, you know? This, it's not cheap to buy real estate. It's not ch cheap to sell real estate, right? And if you're going for the discount. Realtors, I know the amount of watches that are out there. You're a lawyer. You know exactly what I'm talking about, right, David? Um, so we are not we're not a brokerage that lets our realtors run around nilly willy doing whatever they like. We're really on top of things, and um, I mean, and there's cost to quality, right? Um, so so definitely not a discount brokerage and I, I don't have discount realtors in my brokerage. I have top quality brokerage uh, realtors. Um, our, our listings are uh, pride worthy. Uh, you know, um, our systems are in place. We have the top law firm um, with our as partners. We have uh, an, an amazing um, stager that works with us. We have an amazing moving company that works with us. So once a, once a client comes into through our doors, um, I know that our realtors are absolutely top. Like, I mean, you look at listings from Frank Fessa and all of, all of these realtors. I mean, I just took one person's name, but they are literally sharp, sharp, sharp listings. I remember um, one of my realtor friends, uh, he's close to retirement now. Uh, he's very, very much senior than I am. Um, he walked into my second or my third listing. Um, it was not far from here. And he walked in and he said, you know, I don't even have to scroll down and see that whose listing it is. I look at the pictures and I can tell that it's your listing in this neighborhood. So so that's the quality that my, I expect my realtors to put out. That's the quality that I expect myself to put out, you know, and uh, that doesn't come from a discount brokerage at all. I'm not interested in it. I, I, that's not the business I'm in. I don't want, um, want 4,000 um, semi-retired realtors. I'm not interested in that. It's a very active brokerage. You know, people are doing really, really well. We have multiple realtors making over a million dollars and we're, we're very happy with it. We, we're very happy with our, uh, you know, uh, the success of our realtors. Yeah. Well, you, you set the tone. Existence. You two set the tone. It's not about doing the deal. It's about doing the deal right. You know, I, I talk about that all the time uh, with agents and, and other brokerages too, because they don't always do that. They're, they're more focused on getting a deal done. But if you don't do the deal the right way, you haven't structured your agreement of purchase sale correct, and you've left outstanding issues there that, that come up from the time the agreement's signed until closing or, or become it creates issues on closing. And I deal with it at, at that end. Even though we usually find a way to get the transaction done, at the end of the day, it leaves a bad taste in the client's mouth for their agent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we try really hard in our firm not to throw any agent under the bus when, when there's a problem on it. But, you know, sometimes even without us trying to do it, it becomes apparent to even a first time buyer that the agent didn't do everything they should have done to protect them. And they might get that one deal. They'll get the commission on that deal because we'll find a way to get it closed. But they just lose the, the sight of the fact that how, how much that's costing them because they wanted to get that deal done as opposed to getting the deal done right. 
And now that client's not going to be happy. They're not going to refer them to their family and their friends and use them next time. And I think that's sort of the key to success in your industry. You need those referrals. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, um, I was uh, I was speaking to um, Holly um, Maricotti. She's, um, you know, the top realtor for, uh, for Street Soul for many, many years, um, our, our pride and joy at the brokerage. And uh, she was over the day before and we were a couple of us were just having a conversation and she always built her business in Street Soul. Um, you know, so farming was it for her, right? Whichever way she did, she was mm -hmm. walking the street. She was so involved in her community. I mean, she does it right. Let's put it like this. But more and more realtors that I'm talking to that were senior realtors that were, were building their business on, on that, those grounds are saying there's such a mixed community now. There's such mixed uh, um, demographics. Your target audience is constantly shifting and changing. You have to constantly ch change and shift your your um, language and your your dealing and your you know it's just it's just it's such a mumbo jumbo going out there in the market, um, and everybody knows five realtors, so you know actually going in to wherever your real your your know how is, you know where your network is is the way to actually be successful because. If you know me, it's so much easier for, for me to convince you to use me rather than, you know, just going to a complete stranger whose sister and brother and brother-in-law are all, all realtors. And that means referral is the word, right? Your, your network has to grow and you find your own target audience, which is based truly on your interest. You find out in the core, like I always tell my realtors, what is your unique selling proposition? You're selling not houses. If I'm selling houses and David is selling houses, we are in competition with each other. But if I'm selling my service and David is selling his service, right? He's completely different. His age bracket is different. His interests are different. His family is in a different place, right? His son is four years old. He's a sportsman, right? He loves boxing. He loves sailing. If he's working in that kind of community, he'll do amazingly well. I love yoga. My kids are in their 20s, right? I, I have my, my interest is art galleries and wine and cheese tasting, right? So it's I'm a completely different person. So if I find I find what my unique selling proposition is and I start working it as a service, I will be successful because I'm talking to people who understand my language, right? Now I have come up with, with my demographic right off the bat. You know, you set up a restaurant, you set up a coffee shop, you set up any business, you say, okay, I'm, I'm going to sell reading glasses. I'm not going to sell reading glasses to a 15 year old. You know, so, so trying to figure out what that is with your realtors as well. I mean, when they walk into my door, I'm looking at them as a product that was placed on my desk when I was in the advertising agency. And I'm to, trying to figure, figure out where their next business is going to come from. You know, where, which house do you live in? Which area do you work, live in? Where you work, where you've worked pr previously. All of that adds to, to success. Then you're not wasting your time and money, uh, you know, on people that will never resonate with you. And it's, it's fun to see the light bulb go off as well. Because, I mean, I, I've been, you know, present in those moments where, you know, Sabia basically pulls that information out of realtors for, you know, what their unique selling proposition is. Right. And, and when you conduct your business on those levels, it's easy and it's fun. Right. And it makes it enjoyable and putting in those those late evenings and weekends and, and all those hours, you know, feels different than throwing mud against the wall, just trying to attract everybody to you, trying to resonate your message with everybody. It's hard to do that. You know, there's 50,000 realtors. Yeah. But, but we see the biggest success in our business when, when realtors really hone in on the message and, and speak to the audience that relates to them, right? And then business is easy. Yeah, and I think that's, it's, I find it fascinating because I know, you know, you go back 20, 30 years ago and the broker of record and the owners of brokerages would be telling a, a completely different message to their people, to a brand new agent say, oh, where do you live? Uh, streets? Well, okay, you know, draw, get a map, draw a line, make a big box, take an area that, and you're going to go farm that area, go door to door, knock on doors, you know, put out your business cards. 
And, and that was the advice a lot of them were given. And, and people did become very successful starting out that way and everything. But that's a totally different approach. Like, why knock on doors of people that you're not never going to connect with? They're not part of your community. You, I think what you're telling is focus more on who you are and what your community will grow to be of people that, that you can connect with and have a relationship with. And that's how you're going to, that's the farming that you're going to do. It's not, it's not just going door to door on a map. And, and am, am I correct in that? Absolutely. I have uh, one of my, my realtors, Salman Jamil, he's a biker and he went on a listing presentation and the whole listing presentation, they spoke about bikes and, uh, and, and there were so many realtors that were coming after him and he called the guy called called them all off and said you know what i'm selling this house and he said i never ever got to speak about real estate yeah the guy just kept on asking me by questions <laughs> and i got the listing he called me on the way back and i was like you know what that's what i've i've been talking about throughout is this is what works yeah. right and but and, and realtors are really feeling sorry Sorry, imagine how much those two are going to enjoy that relationship. Of course, of you course. Know, they're, to, they're both the seller and Salman are going to have a, you know, are going to have a blast, you know, connecting and, and working. And, 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 you know, Salman's probably going to work three times as hard for that client because of the connection that they have. Absolutely. Yeah, he's going to enjoy it. And then the referrals that he's going to get out of that is going to be other bikers. You know, it, and it's going to, you know, that's the community that he's farming all of a sudden. And that's part of the community that's going to be growing for him and his referral sources. So See, uh, David, we are in an industry, we're selling shelter. Everybody needs a shelter, right? My tattoo artist needs a shelter. My gardener needs a shelter. My, you know, every, everyone needs a shelter. So if you can actually find uh, like-minded people to work with that actually, you know, resonate with you and your mentality and your interests. It, it's joyful to work. I mean, we all work way, way more than we do anything else, right? And especially realtors, it never stops. If you are not networking, if you're not meeting people, if you're not putting the word out as to who you are, and it can't be a big board saying, hey, I'm a realtor, buy from me, because everybody's going to run the other direction. You know, it has to be based on, hey, that's who I am. And then let people ask you what you do and let them come to you. Yeah, and, and look, the, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. Look at the, the growth that you've had in, in the last two years. We just look just two years during COVID, right? The fact that you're, you've been able to expand that much, obviously something that you're doing is working and, and working really well right? Because that's not the case everywhere. It's, it's a, as you said, it's, it's a tough industry. It's a tough way to make a living being real estate. You're on call all the time. You've got to be available. Markets shift and um, you can have, you start off a year, you might have a couple transactions close. That's great. You feel you, you got some money coming in and then it could go dry. It's, it's, you know, and that puts a lot of pressure on you. So you have to have that support system. Somebody has got to be comfortable to say, Hey, I haven't done a deal for a while. You know, take a look at my situation, Sabia and David, and tell me, you know, give me some suggestions. Tell me, help me. You know, what can I, what am I doing wrong? What's new out there? How can I get more business? Yeah, I'll quickly put in one more thing that's come to my mind as we were talking about uh, giving concessions and have, you know, um, cheaper brokerages and all that. I honestly have the most fun when someone has come after two or three years being in, an, in another brokerage in the industry unsuccessfully because the wow factor that they feel when they come in, you know, brand new, they don't know anything about what, what is out there. Right. <clears throat> but it's when actually, um, you know, I mean, I want people, everybody to be successful, but when people have been burnt out there and then they join us and then they know the difference, is when the most joy comes is because they're they're like the wow factor is you know okay you went into a presentation all of this was offered and promised and now none of this is really there rather than this was promised but oh my gosh this is at a different level of service that I, we've received so you know we've david and i've mentioned this quite often it's called the white glove uh service and that's what I feel like, you know, that that's what we try to deliver on a daily basis at, at our brokerage for our realtors. Yeah, and the challenge when you become successful and you do have growth 
is how do you continue to provide that to more people, right? Your, your attention is divided by more agents now than it would have been a a couple of years ago so you're, you're you constantly recruit the right people david you have they have the right attitude they stay for you longer they they do extra work for you they push themselves and this comes from from you know i can't do anything on my own right if i don't have manny and cassandra and manjot and arsh and uh, and mona like you know i mean these people and we just hired roxy if i don't have this team of people that every day do a little bit extra for everyone, right? They're just going above and beyond on a daily basis because they understand. And that comes from your own ethic. If I'm not there and if I'm not working hard, I always have to work harder than everybody else, right? To, to be able to have that kind of culture. And we've, we've been uh, knock on wood so lucky with, with actually being able to, um, you know, um, David, have you seen the difference, right? You was you were there before and you're there now. Like our staff is amazing. Like they are, and, and it's not all new staff. You know, Manny's been there in the company for how long? Cassandra's been in the company for how long? But each and every one of them puts that little ounce of extra effort, you know? Well, and that's a really important point because we, you know, we've talking about recruiting and training, but it, we're not just talking about recruiting and training agents. No. It's recruiting and training your own staff people inside because you've set the bar as to the type of services you want to provide and the type of support you want to provide to those agents. And as you look at it, those agents are really your clients, right? And you're providing them a service. So you have to have more than just the two of you available to support that because you two can't be everywhere. So you have to recruit and train good staff people that are like-minded and that get on the program and do it the same way you're doing it. So they're there to support what you're doing. And, and I think that's one of the keys to, to the success that you've, you've had. And the reason why you can then go out and recruit more agents and do these acquisitions because you have to deliver on those services. Okay. So it can't, as you grow, it's something we learned in our firm too. It can't just be about me, it can't just be about Jonathan Robbins. We need other lawyers trained to do it the way we do it. We need our clerks trained the way we do it. We need our admin people. You're doing the same thing there. And that's why I think you're, you're growing the way you are. You have to deliver on what you're promising to deliver to your agents. Yeah, I mean, and, and just like in real estate deals, things happen, you know, things happen at our end, we are dependent on boards, we are dependent on RICO, we are dependent, we are a company that, uh, David, we have five, five offices from our, from our brokerage, because we have, uh, sorry, eight offices, because we have five boards, and then we have dual offices, because they're realtors that, are, and we can offer that. Right, I can recruit realtors from Hamilton. I can re recruit realtors from Burlington. I can recruit uh, uh, realtors from Cambridge and Waterloo, for heaven's sakes, because I'm I have that ability. But then I'm also dealing with David knows this, like the the bureaucracy and the ah, uh, you know, the joys of having to have settled all of that is is also you know a task at hand, and having those relationships in boards, you know. We have we've developed great uh, relationships with boards. We've uh, we've got great relationships with Rico now, and you know people are doing extra stuff. I call up someone and I said, I remember on on the thirtieth of December, David, uh, for Tarek's son, and I said this has to be done today. Can you please do it? And there they, she answered from her home because they're working from home, and she said, Sabia, I'll do it within forty five minutes. And I received all the paperwork and the confirmation with our, within because they wanted to do, put in the deals for, for last year. So it's just like, it's just, you know, it, 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 this is how you, you, you kind of, I can provide for my realtors is to have all those relationships uh, really strong as well. And it comes down to relationships because you take the time to understand the needs of your agents, understand the needs of those working in-house and in your uh, amongst your staff, how you make them better. And, uh, and you focus on that and it's, it's tremendous service. And it, you know, that's why, you know, how many businesses have actually grown in the last two years in the middle of COVID, you know, can 
can look back and say, look where we were two years ago and look where we are today. So I commend both of you for being able to do this in a, in, on a tough industry with tons of competition out there. And, uh, and you've been able to do that in the toughest times. So you've got the secret sauce. You know, we're not giving away all the secrets in these, in these podcasts, but it's, it's, it's fascinating to, to hear about it and to, and to learn from it because you're doing it the right way. Well, you know, we're like fortunate this. that we're doing what we love, I think. And that's what, what makes this every day just as exciting, you know. Yeah, and David, we're not for everybody, right? Like we turn a lot of realtors away as well, mm -hmm. right? Because I mean, yeah. we want to keep a certain, you know, set of standards in the industry. And, and, and you know, we, we want to resonate with the right realtor. Our, our reputation in the marketplace is extremely important, right? So, you know, if, if there's a realtor that, you know, doesn't conduct themselves accordingly in the marketplace and, and, and you know, does certain things that, that we don't agree with, you know, um, there is no place for, for those realtors here, right? We, we are a very professional brokerage. We take what we do very seriously. We're very passionate about what we do, but we also do it the right way, right? We've been around for a really long time and our reputation in the marketplace is the most important thing. Right. So when we're interviewing realtors, it's, it's, it's a two way relationship as well and a two way interview as well. And I, I think that's really important for for us to to you know, convey as well. It's we're not for everybody. Right. But if you're passionate, if, if, if you do business the right way, if, if you stay as much as, as we do, then then absolutely come and talk to us. And. And you're an evolving business too. And I think that's something the two of you bring to the table, even though the broker has been around for a while, it's, it's different today than it was 10 years ago. It's different today than it was two years ago. I know you two are always focused on the technology and what's the latest and what's the greatest and what's the newest and how can we add value? Let's look at it. Let's consider it. See if it's right for us. If is it right for our broker? But you're always looking for the next thing. And I think that's a, a great thing uh, for you to do as well, as opposed to just sitting back on your laurels and, and saying, you know, okay, we've done this, we've got this many people in house. If we stay like this, this is how we're going to, you know, how much business we're going to, you don't think that way. You're looking for the next, the next greatest thing, create the next greatest thing. So Absolutely. I, I, that's get, a great attitude too. Yeah. And get fearless with, with technology. You know, I keep telling people there's, just do it. Social media, all of this, just, just jump in and start playing like it's a video game, right? Like you spend the last one hour of, of your day, if you're sitting in front of the TV, I keep telling realtors, go in, let people hear your voice, right? It doesn't necessarily, it, it can be a walk that you took your dog out and you saw a cool door or you saw a for sale sign in your neighborhood, come back home, check that listing, you know, what is it to offer? Put a, put, make a little video out of it, put it out there. Everything, you know, if you're active on, uh, on the, I, the other day, I, when, you know, prior to this uh, new lockdown that we had, I was at, at somebody's house for a party. And, and they said, they said, somebody looked at me, David, who hadn't seen me for, for, a, for quite a long time, I think close to two years. He said, it seems you're really enjoying your job. Where did she see that? On social media. Yeah. Right. So yeah. just little things like little, little, little stuff that you can put down as to what your daily is looking like. Um, it would it, it, it really, you know, um, uh, will bring a lot a lot to your table. Don't don't be fearful. Don't be fearful of Instagram. Don't be fearful of if you're not walking the neighborhood. Right. You have to walk something. And if you're looking for, for your unique selling proposition and your demographic, put your word out for whatever interests you. You know, if it's your garden, if it's an interior, if it's a lamp, it's like, and everything and anything makes people think of, of real estate. That's the, the greatest thing about the industry we're, we're in. Yeah, right. But you, you have to keep making your voice heard. And unfortunately, with, with COVID, you can't really do, you know, park events or anything big like that. So you put yourself out, you know, on little, little stuff like this. I have one question for you. What is a party? I heard you said something about going to a party. What is what is that? <laughs> <laughs> David knows it. <laughs> if there's one to be had. 
<laughs> it'll be somewhere okay. around me <laughs> more than more than two people there uh, i know oh my God. i can't can't wait to get back to those things you know it's we'll get there we'll get there absolutely i think we're we, we, we've just joined uh, um uh, at george brown they're doing a, a wine um uh, classes and they're they're doing a course on wine tasting um so that's a su super cool um uh, platform it's virtual but it's virtual. it's really really cool so yeah so me and some of my friends have gotten together and we've all signed up so we will have uh, some sort of a sommelier certification at the at the end of the six wow. month david <laughs> So they do it online. So you just get the wine sent to so, yeah, you. Yeah, so they order gonna... it wine for you. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I mean they do the selection, and then yeah. So I'm super excited about that. Yeah, it's funny. We have, um, you know, some people ask me, you know, you open a bottle of wine, and then if you don't finish it, you know, there's different types of ways to you know put some sort of you know cork in and get the air out and all that stuff. Like, like I got some of that stuff. We never, what do you mean you don't finish the wine? Like we never use those corks. Wine's open. I was going to say, you just finish it. Yeah. You know, it's, way, it's way easier to just finish it. Like who's putting it away for another day? Like, you know, we got a whole bunch of those type of corks and systems. We never use them. Like what for? I, I know we're closing. Hanging, you're but hanging I out just, with the wrong crowd. I know. <laughs> Um, you know, one just quick thing, because I know realtors watch this and hear this, uh, is that um, just keep learning new things. Whatever interests you, uh, never stop learning for not just for realtors, for anybody who hears this. And uh, it will keep you, in, keep you uh, interesting as a human. Um, you know, it'll make you think outside the box. It, it'll make, make your, you know, your mind and your heart should keep growing, I, I feel, you know, and, and learning new things is, is, is the key because it keeps you youthful. Um, yesterday, some, I was going for a booster and um, someone um, in this room uh, said that if I, I was your age, I would also get a booster. Uh, and then I turned around and said, well, I'm, so that was David Gorski, of course. But so I turned around and, and I said, well, you know, I can run circles around you. It's because, you know, you, you just keep, keep fresh. You know, keep my, your mind fresh and, and that'll make you really um, interesting for your clients as well. That's a great way of getting new business. I think that's honestly the best advice that we could portray out there because, you know, real estate, you know, realtors tend to focus so much on real which is great. I mean, real estate is super interesting. We're all super passionate about real estate as well. But we, we have to remember that we're human beings too. You know, we have other interests outside of real estate and, and our clients want to hear about that. They want to get to know us. They want to know what we're all about, you know, who we, we, we are on the inside. And I think the more vulnerable you are with your clients and the more you let them in, the, you know, the more successful you're going to be. You know, I look and at it changes a, your mindset, right? David, you take the desperation out, yeah. right? And you put interest in. So now if you are having fun and you're healthy and you're thinking of, you know, of, of pleasant, bigger things, then the desperation of getting business is, is out, out of the box, right? Now you become an interesting person to actually speak to. Yeah, and, and in your industry, it, it's different than my end of it. And I get jealous of the way you guys can have those relationships with your clients. We have mutual clients, but you get to know them way better than, than I get to know them because it's, it's essential for you to do what you do for you to sit down and have those conversations about their personal life, you know, in order to figure out what type of real estate is really suitable for them. You, you've got to ask them a lot about, you know, their, their, their kids and their grandkids and their, and where they go to work and, and what their hours are like and their commute. And, and it goes on and on and, and, and track, you know, how close you are to a park or to a place of worship. And, you know, all these factors come into it and you have to have those conversations. So it's easier to have those conversations when it's a two-way conversation. They're asking about you as well. And you get to bond with them and you get to find out common interests and things like that. And I think that's essential for your end of the business. Unfortunately, we don't get the luxury of those type of time with the same clients to understand their needs and get to know them the same way. And that's part of what I, what I miss in our business. And um, it's, you know, that's why I say I get jealous of it because you guys know the clients so same clients, but you know them so much better than I get to know them because you don't have those uh, the opportunity for those type of discussions with them. 
we're very fortunate. We're, you know, I, I consider myself very fortunate to be in the industry we're, we're in. And, you know, I, I think it's the passion that, uh, you know, comes out every single day. And then Sabi and I, we both love what we do. And that's why you're successful. Bottom line. Awesome, guys. Well, this was uh, this was a great conversation. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, everybody listening, we really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And uh, Sabia, it's, uh, it's just wonderful to have you around. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and Sabia, thanks for uh, the help in the background of helping us get these things, this, this podcast going too. So um, it took a while for us to get you on, but you've been part of this from day one and um well it's, so, it's both of your brainchild and you know I, and and it's it, i think it's uh, amazing what you guys are doing for 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 people in in the industry it's really nice to it's a lonely business out there and it's really really great to hear a voice um you know which is directional and um uplifting and you know new challenges and new conversations are constantly put out great job thank you, thank you. Everybody stay safe out there, you know, um, be patient when you're looking at real estate, when you're submitting offers, when you're buying real estate. And if you have any questions, you know, the three of us are here. We'd love to hear from you um, and love to help you uh, on your journey as well. So don't be afraid to reach out to us. Um, our contact information can be found all over the internet. Uh, David Corman, David Gorski, Sabia Ali. Come talk to us, stay safe, enjoy it, and, and buy lots of real estate. Welcome to David and David on Real Estate. Join us as we explore the ins and outs of the real estate market and dive deep to understand the issues affecting buyers, sellers, investors, and businesses. If you love real estate as much as we do, sit back, relax, and gain an insider's edge to the exciting world of real estate. David Gorski is a broker and the owner of Sutton Summit Realty, a powerhouse brokerage providing guidance to over 180 realtors. And David Corman is a partner at Corman's LLP, a respected law firm specializing in residential and commercial real estate transactions with offices located in Toronto, Mississauga, and Markham.